Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, and uh, I'm very happy here to be here this morning with Heert Wilders, the Dutch parliamentarian and producer of the celebrated film Fitna, which depicts various verses of the Quran and Muslims acting violently upon it. Fitna, of course, has become the center of an international effort led by the Organization of the Islamic Conference to outlaw criticism of Islam. And so, the first thing I'd like to ask you is, what were your intentions in creating this film? Did you want to uh, insult Muslims and hurt their feelings? Yes. No, uh, Robert, uh, my aim was certainly not to, uh, to provoke uh, Muslims or to get an international stir or problems or whatsoever. I remember very well last year, first I started by writing an article in one of the major Dutch newspapers um, about the threat of the Islamization of our culture and uh, what I thought that the Quran um, um, represented. Then afterwards, <coughs> we had a, I initiated a debate with the Dutch Prime Minister about the same issue. And I thought, well, not everybody is looking um, um, at the, at the, at the C-SPAN in the Netherlands, at all the uh, parliamentary uh, debates. And not everybody is reading the newspaper. So how do I get my message more clear about what I see that the threat uh, uh, contains and what the Quran really stands for? And so it's, it's what, it was not made as a provocation or whatever. It was made by a politician who, of course, is, I'm not a filmmaker, but still I found the obligation well, to, to educate uh, the people in the Netherlands and maybe even abroad about uh, um, uh, what the uh, Quran really stands for. And in order to achieve that, um, I made a choice not to use any actors because then anybody could say, well, look, this guy is playing with the facts. So I used, with the help of some, of some <coughs> uh, people who know even more about the Quran than I do, um, I, I chose certain, um, certain verses from certain surahs and I used uh, real uh, images um, to combine uh, with those uh, verses. Excellent. Yes, I uh, noted myself that <coughs> the film merely shows Quran verses and then Muslims, in some cases, actually quoting the same verses in order to incite people to violence. And I thought that it was extremely ironic in light of that, that anyone would think that the film itself was hateful or violent, yeah. except insofar as it depicts Muslims being hateful and violent on the basis of these Quran verses. And I wondered if you uh, thought that there was any... What has your reaction been to the reaction to the film? In when people say that it is hateful and violent and trying to incite people against yes. Muslims? Well, I fully subscribe to what you <coughs> said, Robert. I mean, if, you, if there would be any hatefulness or blasphemy or whatsoever as part of the my short film, Fitna, um, uh, then it's the, on the, it's the responsibility of the people acting in it. And uh, the people acting in it, in fact, are uh, Muslims, Muslims uh, doing uh, the most um, terrible um, uh, things. So um, it was very strange to see that a lot of countries, from, from Saudi Arabia to Iran, from Jordan um, um, to uh, Lebanon, they all complained in the most terrible way. They said, well, this is blasphemic and uh, he's insulting our Islam, and Al-Qaeda said uh, uh, they made the most terrible threats uh, to me personally, but also to the Dutch troops in Afghanistan, whereas, um, um, uh, more or less, they made fitna. They are fitna. They made it. I mean, they are my actors. So if anybody is to blame for this, it's them. It's not me. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Do you th what do you think are the chances, however, on the basis of this claim that Muslims are being insulted by this film, that uh, the European Union will act to restrict the possibility of such films being made in the future? Well, I think this is uh, a real example of the uh, dimitude of the, uh, of the West, of the European uh, Union, not on only the European Union, <coughs> but the United Nations, um, if possible. Uh, that's only worse. Uh, it's even worse. Um, I think if we would abolish uh, the United Nations or put the General Assembly in Mecca, somewhere um, it would not really change uh, so much as it is uh, today so it's 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 uh, it's very sad that uh, when it comes to we, we are not talking about uh, uh, Geert Wilders or uh, Fitna we are talking about the freedom of speech for everybody I mean this is at stake here I'm totally unimportant when it comes to the to the to the whole picture um, of freedom of speech and this is the first not even the first it's the second or the third step that uh, politicians who are not that brave to stand up and say, come on, whatever criticism you can have, if somebody, we are democracies, if somebody is acting within the boundaries of our laws, uh, within, within the rule of law, 
nobody, no, no country, no Arab country, no United Nations, no European Union um, can uh, uh, stop um, um, exercising uh, their um, um, freedom of speech. Uh, and they are doing that now. So it's, it's pure demitude. I remember very well when the uh, Dutch government, the Dutch foreign minister, uh, went to the Middle East. He went to uh, Damascus. He saw his colleague, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Syria. Uh, and he said, well, um, sirs, uh, there will be, in a few months, there will be a movie called Fitna. And uh, um, it's, it's totally, we are totally objecting the content of that movie. Whereas he didn't even see one second. He didn't know anything about the content of Fitna. And this is... Um, even worse than Dimitude, this is going on their knees, uh, giving in, uh, giving up. Uh, um, uh, this is this is appeasement uh, policy. It's like uh, a lot of chamberlains, but then uh, in the beginning of the 21st century. If the European Union does pass some freedom of speech restrictions, what do you think will be the reaction in Europe? Will there be a, rea a popular protest against this, or have things progressed to the point where if such a measure does become law, that there would be general acquiescence? Well, I, I think it's, it's very hard. I think that if the public really knows what is happening, um, uh, they will not like it, and there will be a popular uh, reaction. However, as uh, so often <coughs> when it comes to uh, UN resolutions or uh, European uh, guidelines, um, uh, people don't know, and they find out uh, when it's uh, too late. And this process, of course, has not started uh, today. Um, you see in every aspect uh, of our life that um, 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 the way we uh, give in to the Islamization of our societies, whether it's in halal food or whether it is in, in, in not talking about educating our children in some schools about the Holocaust because we could offend Muslims, uh, when it is that as, as last week uh, people are almost stabbed to death in the street of Brussels uh, because they were drinking water during the Ramadan and Muslims are offended. I mean, this is, this is one of the many steps <coughs> that um, proves the Islamization and the deterioration um, of what I call um, our dominant um, Christian Judeo culture that should be, that should be there, that we should be proud of and fighting for. And, uh, and so I think that there, there could be a reaction to answer uh, your questions. However, if you look at the political context in Europe today, and it's not only the political lead, it's also... 90% uh, of the mass media, which is very leftish and very liberal. If you today, in Europe, this is how far, unfortunately, we are gone already. If you today criticize it and you say, well, this is because of uh, people from uh, Muslim countries complained, or you are giving in, or you are playing a dimmy, then you are um, uh, most often labeled as a racist yeah. or a xenophobe, even when you are not. So it's not only, only like here in the United States that people, uh, Muslim organizations, are suing people. No. It's yeah. a kind of self-censorship, because in a way, if you say anything critical about uh, what you are just talking about, <coughs> then um, you are immediately a racist. And people don't want to be called and don't want to be seen as a racist. So yeah. this, 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 this makes it very difficult for a real strong popular reaction um, um, to come out. You are immediately a racist, and people don't want to be called and don't want to be seen as a racist. So yeah. this 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 makes it very difficult for a real strong popular reaction um, um, to come out. Well, I think this is something that you and I have uh, shared that we yeah. both have been called this, labeled this many times. Yes. Uh, what is your response to people when you when they say to you that Fitna is racist or Wilders is racist? Yes. How is, how, is, how do you respond? Well, I. I um, I always respond um, by saying that people who think that are uh, really uh, not not only very very wrong, but it's 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 insulting. I mean, you can you can don't you don't have to like my um, um, what I'm standing for. You can vote on another party. You can say, well, this Willis is a crazy guy. Whatever you can, um, people are free to think and do what they like. Um, but I'm everything but a racist. I'm a I'm a I'm a democratic politician in all my veins. I fight. Uh, in a, within the rule of law, uh, every day again in my parliament for uh, my proposals, and if I if they are <coughs> uh, rejected, I accept it and I try again uh, tomorrow. And I have nothing against I have nothing against anybody on the basis of, of race, whatever color they have, whatever sexual preference they have. I don't even have anything against Muslims. Muslims are equal to anybody. I have nothing against them. Uh, however, I have some I have a problem with the ideology. So you, you should make, and I always do that also in my parliament, you should make a distinction between the Islamic ideology 
uh, which is uh, very bad indeed, you know that better than I do, uh, and the people, the majority of the Muslims uh, in Western <coughs> Europe uh, are not uh, criminals or are not uh, terrorists. However, um, say, even by saying that, we should stop the immigration because um, even though those peoples are not criminal, if we have more immigration to Western Europe, our culture will change and unfortunately not for the better. So racism has really nothing to do with that. If Muslims are integrating or assimilating in my country um, and they, um, um, they are equal as anybody else. Of course. Uh, yes, you, you, you say, speaking about immigration, it might be useful to uh, ask you if the Dutch government has any mechanism whatsoever to try to distinguish between Muslims who are bringing the Islamic supremacist ideology and hoping to impose Sharia ultimately upon the Netherlands and Muslims who are interested in assimilating. Yes. Have they, are they even making any attempt to distinguish between the two? No, really not. The only attempt they do, but it's, it's, it's a different cup of tea, they uh, ask people to go to a course <coughs> in order to not only learn the language but to get acquainted with the values of the Netherlands. But then again, uh, last year uh, we spent, they spent uh, hundreds of millions of euros in order to achieve that. Uh, but the classes are empty because they are, uh, two-thirds is empty because they are not attending. Why are they not attending? A, because they are not interested and B, because there is no penalty if they don't come. We are not saying that, well, you are, uh, we spend a lot of taxpayers' money for you to integrate in our society. You are welcome to do that. But if you don't come, uh, please leave our country. We are not doing that. So there is no incentive at all to come. Then again, um, I think I would be in favor now of all the problems that we have and all the demographical um, problems that we face that there should be a full stop at least for a couple of years when it comes to the immigration from uh, Muslim countries. Absolutely. Because I believe that, uh, and you know uh, the word takia, uh, when I was still at, uh, at, uh, at uh, primary school, um, but um, um, you know what, what, what takia means and it means that um, um, even though there is no mechanism. Muslims can, I'm not saying they all do, but they can lie, and they can, they can be politically correct, but I'm very sure that if the numbers grow, and they will, but not, not even become 51%, not even a majority. I mean, you know, there have been studies where countries being compared where the Muslim population was 15, 20, 25, 30%, and even if they are not a majority but become stronger, they will change their tune, and uh, the Islamization will be very hard um, to be returned into uh, what we have today. Oh, quite so, and we're already seeing that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned a little while back uh, Islamization and the demands for accommodation. And we're seeing those increasingly in the United States. Yeah. Uh, they've actually stepped up uh, markedly over just the last couple of years. And uh, I have been reporting on them, and uh, for example, people saying in uh, the uh, Swift meatpacking plants in Nebraska and Colorado, that they, the Muslims saying that they will not uh, take the breaks at the ordinary times. They demand that the break schedule be changed so that they can stop work yes. and break the Ramadan fast. And the uh, meatpacking <coughs> plant was happy to accommodate them, uh, but then the non-Muslims protested and said that this meant that they had to work longer hours and they were being put at a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the Muslim employees. Now, my question is, the, uh, the reaction to uh, my reporting on some of these stories has been uh, people saying that uh, this is just hysteria, that uh, it's, it's, it's hysteria if not something worse. It may be racism or bigotry uh, here again, that uh, there are reasonable accommodations given to all sorts of groups. Uh, uh, Orthodox Jews have won permission to wear the kippah in various circumstances. Uh, in various professional activities, why should it be any different to grant a few cultural accommodations to Muslims? And uh, they say that if somebody opposes this for Muslims while favoring it for Jews or other groups, then obviously there's something there that has to do with simple Islamophobia and nothing else. Well, it has, I believe it has nothing to do with Islamophobia. First, um, is, um, I believe it's very important to say that uh, we should, the biggest disease in Europe today, Robert, is uh, uh, lethal disease, is called uh, cultural relativism. Uh, this is um, 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 the first thing we should, we should fight and go to the doctor for and find a, a good uh, prescription by the most political elite. People uh, tend to say out of political correctness or maybe a, a post-colonial guilt or whatever reason that um, the Islamic culture is 
uh, the same as the uh, as the Jewish or the uh, Christian uh, culture and tradition. But this is so wrong. This is not true. It's not even um, a real class of civilizations. I I I I I, I subscribe to what uh, the brave uh, uh, woman uh, Wafa Sultan uh, said about this. She says it's not even a clash of civilization. It, it's a clash between rationality and uh, barbarism or backwardness. And um, uh, one difference as well is that uh, the Islamization, Islam comes to the West not to um, assimilate, not to integrate. That is a mistake that, that many um, um, people also in my country uh, make. And if you go out of the idea that people are here to assimilate, why should you not um, 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 give them a, a holiday or uh, let them work earlier or whatever? But this is not the truth. They are there um, um, to submit us. They are there to um, to overrule us. They are there um, to uh, to change the whole country into their system. And Islam um, um, knows nothing but Islam, and um, um, it has no place for anything else but Islam. So if we would accommodate it, um, let me tell you, it will be not just one step. Uh, the day <coughs> after uh, we give them a public holiday or uh, compulsory halal food on schools, uh, the next day it will be something else. And the day after, it will be something else uh, again. And this is very bad. And I'm, I'm very disappointed also in my own country. We have a cabinet member. And she's from a, a Christian uh, party, the Christian Union Party. And she said publicly that she could imagine that um, um, the end of the Ramadan would be um, a national holiday in the Netherlands. Can you remember a Christian member of the Dutch uh, cabinet? And there was an enormous public outrage. I mean, I was happy that she said it, even though it was stupid, because it showed that the uh, people are increasingly uh, fed up by the accommodation um, uh, and the appeasing of a Muslim minority, and but more important, the culture. Uh, that wants to destroy us, because this is the end of the day what Islam will do. It will destroy everything that we stand for. And the more we accommodate them, um, the less uh, we will get uh, in return, I'm sure yes. of that. people are increasingly uh, fed up by the accommodation um, uh, and the appeasing of a Muslim minority and but more important the culture uh, that wants to destroy us because this is the end of the day what Islam will do it will destroy everything that we stand for and the more we accommodate them and the less uh, we will get uh, in return I'm sure yes. of that. Yes quite so. Uh, I note with interest as a matter of fact that the next step is already happening and, and I, I saw in the news this morning that in Britain uh, there is a supermarket in a local area where there's a large number of Muslims, but not a majority. Yeah. And they are demanding that the uh, local supermarket not sell alcohol because they find it offensive not to sell alcohol. And this is emblematic of the fact that Islamic law applies to non-Muslims and exactly. non-Muslims must submit to it exactly. in the classic Islamic model such that uh, it's not simply the same kind of thing as uh, uh, Catholic family law or uh, Jewish law governing marriages and so on, that, uh, that because it is expected that non-Muslims must ultimately bow to it. And I was wondering if that second step, after the uh, first the requests for accommodation of various particular practices, the second step of demanding that non-Muslims also uh, adhere to Islamic norms has been reached in the Netherlands or elsewhere in Europe. Yes, you, it has. It has, unfortunately. <coughs> in fact, it, it's already implemented. You were talking about the UK. Uh, we all know that a few weeks ago it became public that we, they even um, have Sharia codes uh, today in the <coughs> United Kingdom. Can you imagine? Uh, you would have uh, called me a total idiot if I would predict that. If I would have predicted that two years ago, that in a European country, the United Kingdom we would have Sharia codes. And on the continent, is there, are there also, is there also Sharia being applied? There, there, is, there is not Sharia being applied today, but we had a Dutch Attorney General who said in a, a public debate in Parliament, I believe it was two years ago, that he could imagine that if there would be, would be more Muslims in the Netherlands, that if there, if there would be at the end of the day a majority of Muslims, that the Sharia would be implemented in the Netherlands. In, 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 what he should have said is that I will make sure that A, never our country will consist out of 50% of Muslims, but B, even if that would happen, that we would do everything to prevent the Sharia yeah. being implemented, because Sharia means end of democracy, Sharia means end of freedom, uh, Sharia means uh, submission to the um, most terrible Islamic, Islamic uh, uh, laws. So um, you see that 
indeed happening uh, those kind of uh, <coughs> demands uh, in Europe and in the Netherlands slowly uh, the political elite is giving in uh, but uh, and this is the good news uh, the public uh, the electorate is increasingly fed up uh, by accommodating um, um, uh, Muslims in the way uh, they want to so uh, the countervailing power against the weak uh, dimitude of the political elite is increasingly uh, strong so you see the UK as a kind of European vanguard in its adoption of Sharia and you think that continental Europe will follow? Yes, I'm afraid so. That's why I was, I was very impressed by, uh, I, I met this week here in the United States, uh, Congressman Tom Tancredo. Yes. And I was very much impressed with that. He made, as you say, unfortunately he's leaving office uh, soon, but he made this uh, anti-jihad law and he said, well, if, if, if somebody who is resident of the United States is in favor of Sharia, we, sh we should uh, be able to extradite them. And somebody who comes to uh, the United States and is in favor of Sharia uh, should not be uh, permitted. I mean, this is a first step. I would wish that um, 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 European leaders, and Robert, we are um, without, we have a problem in Europe that we, are, uh, we have no real leaders anymore. There is a lack of leadership in Europe. People who lead their country, they are all accommodating, they are all looking for political, economical, political correct reasons, uh, wanting to be in office uh, the day after tomorrow, but they are forgetting that we are losing our continent, we are losing our identity, we are losing everything that we stand for. And this is leadership, that you stand up and that you say whatever the, the consequences, this um, um, may not and uh, shall not uh, ever uh, happen. And unfortunately that is lacking in Europe today. Do you think that in the coming years that there will be a growing movement in Europe against Islamization and that the mainstream parties will take it up? Well, you, you, I, if I talk about my country, the Netherlands, you already see that we are not only <coughs> almost doubling in the polls since one and a half year, but you see that the, the, the parties that we are getting uh, voters from uh, are very slowly uh, changing their tune. Not perhaps because they really believe in what I say, but because uh, this is politics. They don't like, they want their voters back. So very slowly it might happen, but it, it, will, be, it will be too late before anything changes. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm very proud and very happy that there will be an initiative in Jerusalem um, in December of this year, um, hosted by uh, Professor al a member of Knesset in the, in the, in, in the Israeli uh, parliament, and there are um, um, 10, 20, 30 um, um, European lawmakers from respected countries where there is a grow of that kind of parties like my party, uh, like for instance the Danish People uh, Party, uh, that they would uh, come there and not only talk about how bad it is today in Europe, but also try to come with concrete solutions Excellent. when it comes to immigration, when it comes to um, initiatives, uh, initial law to ban the Sharia uh, forever. I mean, be concrete and, and, and show the people not only that we have solutions and that we are serious politicians, but also show the electorate that there is not only in some country one or two mavericks that are labeled by the leftish liberal elite and press as, as xenophobes, no, but that we are responsible politicians and not racist, and nothing whatsoever, and that we have initiatives and that we are um, combining our forces. And this is not only a message to the electorate and to the leftish and liberal press and elite in Europe, but it's also a message um, to the Arab world and to the yes. Islamic world and to the people already in Europe from back to the <coughs> message that there are not only there are not, not only demis in Europe, there are also people who are willing to fight Excellent. in a democratic way, uh, in a non-violent way, but we will fight you. And, uh, and we will start now or we will never start. And we are aware of what the program is, we are aware of what they're trying to do. Exactly. When the mainstream is still completely clueless about this. You are fully right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that sounds like a very important conference. It is. And I wish you all success in that. I hope you will be there. I hope so. Okay. Yes, it will be great. Yes. Uh, in any case, do you see then the future of Europe as uh, one in which anti-Islamic, uh, anti-Islamization groups might uh, actually become a majority? Well, a lot of things have to happen. <coughs> I was a guest in Switzerland not so long ago of, uh, when, uh, in Batyeo and, uh, and her, her, her husband. And, uh, you know, the, 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 she wrote this important book, Eurabia. Yes. And uh, I remember when I first read it, uh, like I uh, read with all the pleasure all your books as well, and I learned a lot, I learned a lot from it, really, that um, uh, when you read it at the first time, um, you think, well, it's, it's, it's maybe in the future. 
uh, it will happen. But it's it's coming. It's coming uh, uh, very very close, and um, we are very far away today for the anti-Islamization organizations to become uh, a majority. Yes. But we are gaining um, voter by voter, person by person, day by day. Uh, we are gaining uh, ground. We are we are winning uh, uh, very slowly, but we are winning. And, um, and, and this is, uh, is is so important. So it will not be in a couple of years' time, perhaps. But it also depends what the elite, what the ruling demis of the elite will do. Will they uh, change their tune, or will they not? Because, like I told you, in many many countries, the uh, the gap between the political elite and the vox populi is is is, is very very large. Yes. And um, if that bridge will not be um, will not be crossed, then uh, I think um, um, it will be even uh, sooner that uh, there would come a majority of people who fight uh, against it. In many, many countries, the, uh, the gap between the political elite and the vox populi is, 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 is very, very large. Yes. And um, if that bridge will not be, um, will not be crossed, then uh, I think uh, um, it will be even uh, sooner that uh, there would come a majority of people who fight uh, against it. So that question, I suppose, is actually a component of a larger question, yeah. which is that there are many people in the United States who say Europe is lost. The demographic uh, data is uh, so prohibitive that there will be Muslim majorities very soon yes. in most of the Western European countries, and that uh, the elites are so supine, or either, either, either supine or complicit, what possible hope can there be? Yes. Do you hold out well, hope for the future? Yes. Well, I, 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 what I hope, uh, and what I also said when I uh, spoke uh, at a lunch meeting for the Hudson Institute in New York uh, this week, I hope that America will <coughs> not be the last man standing. That um, if um, uh, in a few years or a few decades time, uh, they will wake up one day and say, who the hell lost Europe? Who lost Europe? Yeah. Europe is gone. We had here uh, an ally, and it's gone. It's, it's, it's became, it became an Islamic Europe, and we have no uh, a partner politically, we have no uh, partner economically, we have no partner uh, military. Uh, it's all gone. Our friend uh, became the enemy, and um, uh, the only country uh, to defend our values and to defend the heritage of, of, of Rome and, and, and Venice and Jerusalem will be America. Um, help us not to let that happen. And what can we do? We can implement laws, like I said, anti-Sharia laws. We can be far more tougher on our immigration laws. Yeah. It's really important because indeed you are fully right that um, if you look at the demographics, um, um, we are already losing uh, that war. I mean, uh, in my country, uh, the birth rate is something like 1.8%. As you know, you need 2.1%. And most of, uh, of our um, 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 Moroccan or Arab or Islamic um, uh, people in my country have something like 2.6 or 7 or 8 and it's, it's all over Europe, it's the same. Fortunately in America this is not the case yet. So we have to think about it as the fact that we are in fact in a war but um, like in the past it's, it's not a conventional war. It's not that the, the armies of the Arabs are uh, uh, in front of the gates of, uh, of, uh, of Vienna uh, as it was uh, uh, some centuries uh, ago at, or at, uh, at Poitiers. This is not the case anymore. It's, I wish it was conventional because then people could see who the enemy was and they were willing to fight it. It's not conventional. It's done by uh, demographics, it's done by immigration and it's done by appeasement uh, by the elite. And, um, and we cannot win this war if we take measures both on Sharia, both on immigration, uh, when it comes to uh, when is, are people welcome in your country and or not. I mean, we should really take an enormous effort because um, um, we are in a war and uh, our leaders um, are uh, surrendering uh, before uh, they even fought. Yes, they are. Yes. And uh, for many time, in many cases it's because of uh, very short-sighted political or economic calculations. And of course Sharia finance is a very grave problem with the, uh, the, the wholesale buying up of so much of uh, the Western properties, Western capital, Western capital assets. Yes. So many things. Yeah, right. uh, what would you say to uh, bankers, to financiers, to economists who think that it's uh, it's it's a simple necessity to make various concessions and accommodations to deal with the Islamic world 
and Islamic finance. Yes. But I say, I, I, I say to them, uh, to those <coughs> bankers, as I say to um, other people uh, that are accommodating, that uh, it sounds on the short term, it might sound attractive uh, for your business, but in the long term you will pay the price. And uh, that will be, the price will be that um, you will have nothing to say anymore about your investment, about your bank, it will be, it will be gone uh, entirely, it will be out of your hands. Don't think you are dealing uh, with uh, uh, a Swiss bank or a bank from the Caribbean or whatsoever. You are dealing um, with a bunch of people that at the end of the day want to, um, want to submit you, and want to rule you and want to enforce on you their ideology. And you will have nothing to say and you will have helped them um, 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 making your own grave. And this is something that um, um, people should be aware of and should not do. Yes, it's, uh, well, of course, well, that's the main problem. Yeah, right? it There's is. There's no awareness of these exactly. issues. Exactly. And uh, that also is, of course, that's why we're having this interview, is one small step or one small blow in trying to uh, overturn the hegemony of the mainstream. Do you find that in the Netherlands the mainstream press coverage is uh, as... Uh, uninformed, as ignorant, as perhaps also complicit in this as the government is also? Yeah, they are, they are very, very complicit. Of course, there are some exce exceptions, but 95% uh, of the Dutch press uh, is, uh, is, 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 is leftish, is liberal, is uh, politically uh, correct, uh, is, um, and, um, is, is not uh, objective in any possible way. Um, and this, this is one of our major problems, uh, indeed, uh, Robert. Not only in the Netherlands, but in, in all my colleagues from all the other countries, uh, and maybe it's the same even in the yes, United States, that it's very hard to get some honest press, co press uh, um, 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 uh, covering. Um, whether you make a speech, or whether you write an article, or even if you write a book, um, they will label you as, 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 as racist, as, as fascist, even uh, only when you talk about, if you use one word uh, about Islam or, or dimitude. And uh, um, 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 in my country, uh, we are paying a lot of billions of taxpayers' money uh, to a huge uh, public um, uh, broadcasting company. And it's very unfair because uh, at least uh, we should have a more liberal or more conservative left and right kind of, uh, of uh, broadcasting companies. Yeah. And we don't. It's 95% one-sided. And it's nowadays so important, so important, people um, hardly, unfortunately, um, read the common people read books or whatsoever, they, they watch TV almost, yes. almost all day. So if you're on TV, you're, the image that you get on TV is so very important. Um, um, so I believe, and that's what I proposed at the Netherlands, that we should get rid uh, totally of the public TV, maybe at one channel when there is uh, something going on, uh, and for the rest, uh, the, uh, let, uh, the market, uh, um, um, uh, let the market decide what will uh, be broadcasted. And I'm sure that uh, our voters, our electorate, is more balanced uh, than uh, the media today, and everybody is paying for that. Yes, absolutely, everybody is. Uh, it, so, I understand that you've been getting some mainstream press coverage in the United States while you've been here the last few days. Yes, yes, and well, when I'm, and this is, uh, it's always, for me, it's an it's a enormous uh, privilege to be in the United uh, States, even though with all the security surrounding it, it's a, uh, uh, it's like coming uh, home. I have the same feeling when I go to uh, Israel uh, many times, when I arrive at Ben Gurion Airport, or when I arrive at uh, Washington on the York Airport. When I meet people like yourself, but also other people, it's like it's like it's like another world. Not only the free world, but it's like there are more people uh, um, 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 in in support and an understanding than at least when you look at the, at the level of the elite uh, uh, in Europe. And it's it's very strange. That's why. Uh, I'm not only so proud about uh, what America is doing, even though it makes a lot of mistakes, but it's, it's almost the last bastion um, of uh, freedom. And my message, to, my message is to every American I tell to, you are uh, losing Europe. You will be the last man standing. Yes. Don't mess up yourself, uh, but uh, make sure that you invest in your European allies. I'm not only so proud about uh, what America is doing, even though it makes a lot of mistakes, but it's, it's almost the last bastion um, of uh, freedom. And my message, to, my message is to every American I tell to, you are uh, losing Europe. You will be the last man standing. Don't mess up yourself, uh, but uh, make sure that you invest 
in your European allies and in the in the, in the correct uh, European allies. No, I'm not talking about the about the, uh, the, the the French or the German or the uh, Golden Brown, the UK uh, leaders, uh, because um, they are dimmies. Uh, they are giving up. They are appeasing. They are chamberlains. And um, um, at the end of the day, you will have to do the job. Well, you know, I appreciate what you're saying very much, and it's an interesting perspective because uh, we, of course, uh, in America, consider there's a great deal of media bias here also, and it's very hard to uh, uh, get an honest discussion of this, these issues uh, here, and it's, uh, it's interesting to find that, well, it can always be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you, and we'll see it's worse. Yes. But uh, the, the question, actually, is this, that you're, you're saying that we need to help our European allies, and I think that that's a very urgent thing that we need to do. But while you see the United States fighting against jihad terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan, at the same time, when the President of the United States says that Islam is a religion of peace, when this has been echoed by both presidential candidates, when the Secretary of State has said the same thing, uh, and they have iftar dinners in the yeah. White House and so on. Uh, do you think that uh, it's, I mean, I suppose <laughs> uh, the, the situation, in other words, seems very hopeless, that the United States is going to wa awake, awaken to what's well, going on in Europe. I hope so. This is why, uh, uh, why I am here, but I hope many more European politicians will come here, or other people, anti-Islamic groups or whatsoever, intellectuals uh, and, and like yourself, journalists. Uh, we should make the public aware that uh, on the long term um, um, it's not in the interest of the uh, United States themselves, it's not in the interest of the uh, geopolitical um, um, stability and safeness if America would use Luro. It would indeed be the last man standing. And I also didn't understand the fact that uh, the U.S. president today at 9-12 uh, uh, said uh, America of uh, Islam is a, is a religion of peace. Um, and this, is, this is a totally ununderstandable reflex of the political leader. I remember when in the streets of Amsterdam uh, a few years ago, as you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Theo van Gogh was slaughtered in the street, that one day later uh, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands and even the Queen of the Netherlands went to uh, visit the mosque uh, and shook hands with uh, moderate Muslims, as if we had any problems with moderate Muslims, instead of standing up and saying what need, needed to be said. So this is a ridiculous reflex. And, uh, but I, I think that also the American people in the long run uh, will not only see that uh, things will change and the Islamization will take part in the United States itself, uh, I'm talking to uh, people when I'm here this week, and I hear people saying that, did you hear that about the mosque being built there? Did you hear that about the halal food? I mean, there is also a growing awareness yes. in the United States. And, and, and I think by the uh, government, by the administration, uh, there will be uh, people uh, needed at least who will also think about the uh, political interest that uh, they will not uh, let Europe be lost and that they will stop advocating that, for instance, what the United States unfortunately is doing, that Turkey would become yeah. a, a member of the European Union. This would be the most terrible and worst idea when it comes to the Islamization of our, of our continent. And I think that um, um, many Europeans, and uh, people like yourself from the United States, should talk about it more uh, to, 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 to the public, uh, to the uh, leaders, uh, and, and try to get the awareness and the sense of urgency. Yeah. It's, it's a matter of a sense of urgency uh, a little bit higher. Yes, well, this is, it seems that in both cases, in America and in Europe, there is a gap, as you mentioned before, yes. between the elites yeah. and the people who they are purporting yes. to govern. It is. The, the, the difference is, uh, it's true that uh, the numbers are different, uh, not only demographically, uh, but also when you look at, uh, look at the Netherlands. We have uh, 16 uh, million inhabitants, one uh, million of them are Muslims. It's one out of 16. It's not, not to be compared with the United States. We get our immigration from totally different countries than uh, you do. So the, di the difference is there. But let me tell you that um, if um, 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 Europe will be lost, is if Israel will be lost, um, um, the, United, the United States will be the next target yes. um, um, of Islam. And you have no allies anymore. And mm -hmm. it will be very difficult. So 
it's far better to invest uh, in some preventive matters today than when it's too late and your children and grandchildren are already almost uh, wearing headscarves uh, walking through the streets of Washington. Can you confirm something I heard uh, last year that the Brussels City Council is already uh, over 50% Muslim? I don't know that. I'm 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 not Belgian. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I know. I know you're not Belgian. No, okay. But I okay. No, you had heard this because no, it's I, a, I heard it's fairly really high, uh, Robert. But I don't exactly know if it's if it's a majority uh, already. That I don't know. Because but if I, it is, yeah. or if it becomes yeah. such in other European cities, yeah. then obviously the process is much harder to reverse. It can be voted down. Exactly. And, and listen, uh, when I talk about the Netherlands, uh, our two uh, biggest cities major cities, Amsterdam and Rotterdam, if you look at uh, the people under the age of 18, the younger people, already today half of it is from non-Western origin, mostly uh, Muslim. So um, this would be incredible. Imagine that uh, New York or, or Denver or Washington, that half of the population under the age of 18 would be uh, Muslim. Uh, this is the future of our society. They win in demographics, they already have uh, almost the majority now when it comes to youngsters and, and we are, they are representing as well an enormous an electoral force. Uh, why are they pampered by, in my country, by the social democrats? Uh, they are pampered because they represent, not, uh, they represent an enormous uh, voting force, not only because mm -hmm. the leftish and the liberal invented the concept of the multicultural society and the cultural res relativism in the 60s and the 70s and they are not willing to admit that they make a, make a mistake, sometimes politicians are almost like humans, not willing to admit a mistake, but they have they have a big interest in it. There are, there are those voters. We have had municipality elections in Rotterdam, where the former party of Mr. Fortuyn was very strong, where they lost the elections because of the Muslim vote. No. And it's already happening so today. There it is. Yeah. It is. It is there. future of our society. They win in demographics, they already have uh, almost the majority now when it comes to youngsters, and, and we are, they are representing as well an enormous um, electoral force. Uh, why are they pampered by, in my country, by the social democrats? Uh, they are pampered because they represent, not, uh, they represent an enormous uh, voting force, not only because the leftish and the liberal invented the concept of the multicultural society and the cultural res relativism in the 60s and the 70s, and they are not willing to admit that they make a, make a mistake. Sometimes politicians are almost like humans, not willing to admit a mistake. But they have they have a big interest in it. There are, there are those voters. We have had municipality elections in Rotterdam, where the former party of Mr. Fortuyn was very strong, where they lost the elections because of the Muslim vote. No. And it's already happening so today. There it is. Yeah. It is. It is there. In the United States, we have one Muslim congressman out of 435, and his election was hailed as a triumph of multiculturalism and yeah. diversity. And even though he, uh, uh, well, there are many questionable things about him, uh, I was wondering, are there similar figures in national governments yeah. in the uh, in Europe already. Yes, we are in, in my country, in the Netherlands, and I, make, I made a, bit of, bit, a big noise about that, and I had a debate, and I had a motion of non-confidence, which unfortunately was rejected. We have uh, two Muslim um, uh, members of cabinet, and I did not complain because they were Muslim, because this would be ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, one a person from uh, Turkey and one from Morocco, what is the problem that they have double nationality? Uh, a lady a secretary uh, who, uh, of justice who is uh, besides Dutch um, also uh, Turkish <coughs> and uh, a minister of social uh, affairs who is um, also Moroccan from Moroccan uh, nationality. And I think this is something we should and we can never, never expect. Because if you have double nationality you have not only double loyalties but there is also, for instance, the Turkish constitution um, uh, gives you certain duties uh, and gives you certain uh, penalties. For instance, if you are critical to the uh, Assyrian problem or to, uh, uh, to the problem of, uh, of Cyprus, uh, according to the penal law in Turkey, if you are a Turkish uh, person uh, living abroad, uh, uh, you get 50% more uh, of, a, of a penalty or you have to be able to go to the army. Imagine if we are, uh, and I wish, I hope we will never will, we be in a war uh, with Morocco. 
what would this member of the Dutch cabinet do? I mean, where is the loyalty uh, besides uh, the loyalty by the Moroccan constitution? So it's happening already today, and I think it's, it's, it's very wrong. You should have only one loyalty. And I would have said, by the way, the same if there was a minister who had also the passport from Sweden, because the, the principle is the same. But it's not from Sweden, it's from <laughs> two um, um, Arab countries. And the influential and the double, uh, the double um, 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 loyalties are increasing and increasing. People don't like it. I got a lot of support when I initiated that debate in the Dutch Parliament, but of course it was rejected by 90% of, of the Parliament. Probably because they saw it as racist. They did. They surely did. Yeah. Yes. And yet, race has nothing to do with it. No, like I said, I also yeah. said in Parliament that if the, the, the lady, who by the way is a, is a very good politician, I have nothing against her, it's about double loyalties, if she would have been <coughs> Swedish with blonde yes. hair, I would have made exactly the same point. And the people said, well, I don't believe that. You only say it because yeah. she's, she's, she's from Turkish um, origin, which is nonsense. One last question, and I thank you for your time this morning. Uh, if you became Prime Minister of the Netherlands, uh, what would you do besides limiting immigration, which of course is very important, to try to stem the tide of Islamization? Well, besides exactly what you said, the stop of the immigration, uh, I would first, because I believe that uh, it's also a, a, a problem of way of thinking, like I said, I would uh, try to stop uh, the fact that we are cultural relativists. I would put what, what the Germans call a light culture, in my country that word has a very negative connotation because it's in German, but what it means is a, a leading culture, not a monoculture. And, uh, of course, other cultures are welcome, but I would put in our constitution an article that uh, our uh, dominant uh, culture um, is based on humanism and the Judeo-Christian uh, values. This is very important. It's more than symbolism because you can make a lot of laws referring uh, to that article. Uh, secondly, I would want to stop the Islamic symbolism. I don't like uh, that there are uh, almost more mosques than churches in the Netherlands. So I would, I would want to stop not only the, f the foreign funding um, from uh, Gulf countries and Saudi Arabia to buy mosques, but there are enough mosques in the Netherlands uh, today. I would want to close Islamic schools, not because uh, it's like, again, on, out of a racist motives, because I believe that Islam, like I said, not the people, but the ideology, it's very dangerous and the worst thing we can do is if we want people that are already in our countries to assimilate, uh, and I do, that um, uh, well, young children and young boys are being brought up and being educated with an ideology full of hate. So stop, the, stop it. Uh, we could have programs like we even have today in the Netherlands for voluntary remigration to the country of origin. A lot of people use it, but it, it could be done uh, far more than it's done uh, today. And I think that um, it's very important uh, because nowadays in the Netherlands we have almost every month debates when there is a lot of crime committed uh, by Moroccan youngsters or uh, people from uh, Islamic origin. And that is not, they don't commit a crime with the Quran in their hand, but it has a very big cultural uh, component. Yes. And um, 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 people are not only fed up with that, but this is really uh, not an incident, but a structural security problem in the Netherlands and it shows the difference of values. I mean, um, calling people, women, just because they are walking through the streets a, a whore or a, a, a stabbing an ambulance uh, personnel or the police or whatsoever. No respect for anything else. I mean, people um, from 13 years old uh, saying on the street to a Dutchman, um, uh, wait, in 10 years uh, we will be the boss here and we will kick your queen out as the first. I mean, this is not one person who says it, it's the general attitude. And I believe that we would be far more straight. We used in the Netherlands, unfortunately we are a country of consensus, and we have a multi-party system, we only compromise, and we like to hold each other's hands and sing Christmas songs under the Christmas tree all year long, and nothing, nothing really is changing. And what I wish is that, that we give an example, that we tell them that if you are not uh, complying to our values and our laws, uh, then there is no place here in the Netherlands. If you adhere and assimilate to our laws, okay, you can stay, you are equal as anybody else. But unfortunately you are not, and if you are not, we will strip you of your nationality if you have a double nationality, and we send you away to Morocco. Robert, I always said in my parliament uh, to the speaker and to our prime minister uh, that if you would do that, I am sure that we would only need one or two planes. Because people would see that we would take this problem seriously, and they would change their tune. If you stab somebody uh, now, um, or, or, or beat up uh, a guy uh, or woman uh, as a Moroccan, you will get 
um, um, community work uh, for two hours or for ten hours or something like that, there is no penalty, and 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 and, and the government even gives incentives to that. So be stronger, be tougher, show them um, um, that um, there is never a place for violence, uh, Islamic violence um, um, in the Netherlands. Like I said, the most important thing is uh, immigration, the stop in immigration. And it's very important, if you allow me, to, uh, as a few last words, that I'm not talking about asylum seekers. I'm talking about immigration. I voted in my parliament in favor of, um, for instance, um, 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 homosexuals for, from Iran to get temporary visas as asylum seekers in the Netherlands. This is something different. There should always be a place uh, for people like that uh, in the Western countries. I'm talking about uh, what I say, um, um, the, the, the Islamic um, um, intifada that is coming from a lot of Maghreb, from a lot of Islamic uh, countries. I'm talking about uh, the colonizing of our country by huge amounts of Muslims that are really not willing to integrate, but willing, um, uh, whose own and sole aim is that at the end of the day uh, to overrule and to submit uh, and uh, ev to use every possible means to achieve that. We should, be, we should stand up and tell them it will never happen, enough is enough, we will defend our own culture and heritage. Bravo, yes. Well, I hope that you will one day be the Prime Minister and I hope. these policies. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and you're great in any case. You're a great hero in Europe and around the world. Thank you very much. And an example that I hope many more politicians will follow. I hope so. Uh, Heard Wilders, thank you very much. Thank for, you. Uh, and it's a pleasure uh, to be your guest. And uh, I read, uh, really, I'm, I'm not just saying that to be kind, but um, um, your books are uh, being uh, read so much in, in, in Europe, and you're really seen as an icon in our fight. And you asked, you asked before what could American and, and, and people do in order to help. Um, well, uh, maybe you allow me to say one thing, please. You are make an enormous contribution and help by staying and continuing writing all those fabulous books. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Certainly will. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Pleasure.